Do you want to know the one thing that has been bugging me for such a long time already? By now, I've already reviewed quite a few Surface Pro 4 competitors. And every time I have to say it is quite good, but it is just not as good as the Surface Pro 4. Even though I've never actually reviewed it, because the last one I did review was the Surface Pro 2. And obviously, a lot has happened since then. And in this video, it's actually not about if the Surface Pro 4 is as good as I always said it would be, but the sad fact that even though it's almost one and a half years on the market, it is still by far the best tablet convertible out there on the market. And I'm actually not quite sure why no one else has been able to catch up. And that's why I would say let's get into the first really great thing, which would be the design and build quality because it is built so well and so solid with this premium heft, even though it doesn't really feel heavy or anything like that. And the weight balance is really great. It is thin and overall looks absolutely nice here with the cutouts for the fans, ventilations and so on. The speakers here nicely, very subtly integrated. It just feels, looks and appears to be amazing and it is because as you can see here the hinge has a little bit of wiggle room but it works all the way back and you can use it very versatile and it's maybe not quite as good as the Lenovo watch band hinge but the next best thing to that otherwise let's check the ports here on the left side we have the headphone jack here we have the cutout for the hinge. If we would open that hinge, we will see the micro SD card slot. Yes, I would wish for a proper SD card slot, but I guess this is okay for these days. The second cutout here on the right, here we have the, um, the port for the magnetic charger. Then we have one USB type A, which is at least the minimum that any tablet should have, because I'm very happy still to see that, because I'm not quite sure if the next one will still have one. And the display port. Yes, we don't have any Thunderbolt so far yet, but Pretty sure the next version will get that, but it's actually not a huge deal, at least not for me. Here on the top, we have the volume rocker and the power button. Otherwise, of course, the port for the type cover, which I actually already want to go into. And before I'm going to connect it, let me quickly talk about that for a second, because otherwise the screen will turn on and you will see the hello camera that actually works quite nice because about the keyboard. I was never a big fan on the Surface Pro 2. I don't I don't know what was wrong, but I just didn't like it. But this time we have a nice amount of key travel. And as you can hear, it is not a super quiet one, but it's a very subtle sound, a very even and really nice layout and design. Everything works out quite nice. The one thing that I don't really understand is why we don't have a brightness control for the display. Very sad to see. Yes, I know there is the automatic brightness feature, but I would definitely wish for an easy solution on the keyboard. We don't have that, but at least the keyboard is backlit. So let's actually attach that one. And then you will already pretty much obviously see once it turns on that we have Windows Hello and it reacts really, really nice. Of course, obviously my face isn't pointing towards it, but as you have seen, it works really well. Not just really well in daylight, but because actually in very, very dark situations, this works really nice and so convenient that I don't really see a need for a pin or anything like that anymore because most of the times you just look at the display anyways and it just unlocks pretty much instantly. So this is actually something that makes a difference. Now, if we quickly go into the trackpad, I gotta say it's yeah, maybe not the biggest one, but it reacts very well because of course it is a precision trackpad. As you can see, the scrolling works absolutely nice. Super responsive, great texture, I love that. So the keyboard, really good, and maybe even better for what it is would be the trackpad. The next thing that I wanna talk about would be the pen to cover all the input devices, because if we put that away and zoom in a little bit, you will see the following. Of course, we have Windows Ink here, for example. And I gotta say, the one thing that I really like so much about this pen is the following. It just doesn't feel like you would draw on glass or plastic or anything like that because we have a nice rubber tip and it's such a smooth workout. And it doesn't maybe work like on the Lenovo Yoga where it feels like you would actually write on paper, but this works so good and precise. And if you can see, Thin lines are no problem, thick lines are no problem. So very precise towards everything. You can write on it really conveniently. As you can see, this works so nice. I really like that. And I can't really say anything bad about it. So this would have been it. Of course, you can also use this as the eraser if you want to. Very flexible, you could launch OneNote. But I just gotta say, I'm not someone who can actually do something with a stylus, so that's why I will put it away. But I can tell you that it is a very nice one. So the next thing to talk about would be the display, which has a resolution of 27 by 30, uh, 36 by 1824. It's a little bit of an odd resolution, but it means nothing different than we have a three by two aspect ratio. And that one works definitely nice on a tablet, but to get to the qualities of this actual display, here is what I gotta say. 
My measurements with my Spider 5 showed me 99% of sRGB and 78% of Adobe RGB. The gamma was a little bit wobbly, not perfect, but it actually looks fine. And I'm not uh, someone who really gives too much into all the values that I get here, because for me it's more about the subjectivity. But one thing that I definitely want to go into is the brightness. Lowest brightness is 12 lux, which is nice. 350 is maybe not super bright but it should get you at least through the day if you are in a normal environment. In direct sunlight it will get quite hard, but at least we get quite good black levels here and still quite a strong contrast with the white point actually being ever so slightly on the colder side, so I'm totally fine with that. And that's why I wanna get into my, let's say, subjective opinion about it. Because one thing that is actually not as bad as I expected it to be is the scaling. I'm not quite sure, but it works actually quite good. Usually I don't like the super high res displays, but it works out nice. Like I said, the white point ever so slightly warm, but the really nice one, black levels. Super deep, no light bleak, top notch quality. And obviously the colors are also very nicely balanced, very vibrant, very sharp, and it actually of course it is a glossy display, but it's not as bad as I expected it to be really nice. But I have to complain about one thing here when it comes to the display. Because out of the box, and I'm not quite sure if I will get it right, DPSD is on. This is display power saving technology. And this means nothing else that if you are in a darker environment, also if you have darker content on the screen, like a video and so on, the screen will dim or the contrast will change. Very annoying. You can get rid of it, but it's actually not as easy to get it by, done by default. Of course, it's not that hard either. There are gui guides out there, but you should definitely do this in my opinion, because... I was not a fan of it, but otherwise, an absolutely beautiful screen. About the speakers. I'm going to say something that I did never expect to say, but the speakers are really, really good. Absolutely, without any issue. They are loud enough in all situations and I did not expect them to sound that full and rich and high quality and with a nice balance because on the Surface Pro 2 it was still very flat, very weak, not loud enough. And I'm not quite sure because no other tablet convertible on the market that I've reviewed so far did get even close to this one and that's why I'm super happy. And the same actually, which makes me also very happy, is that the headphone jack delivers also really nice, full, high quality sound. So they did a great job here. Let's talk about the performance in here. And this is actually already the next highlight because we only have a 256 gigabyte SSD, which usually degrade quite heavily in terms of write speeds. And this shows that they used a high quality SSD here because even though usually those speeds get better with 512, they are already fast with almost 1600 of read and over a thousand. Because usually what you will get on a similar device is like three or maybe 400 in read speeds or in write speeds, which is very important. And the boot up time was at eight to nine seconds, which is still absolutely fine though. If you go into the browser, as you can see here, scrolling in Chrome doesn't work perfectly, but you won't really see anything noticeably better on any device with a dual core. So this still performs well, because I can tell you one thing, performance in daily use is absolutely there. You don't need anything better. You don't need an i7, you don't need a KB Lake or something like that because the performance here is still pretty much on the same level. You can do whatever you want to. Of course, like I always have said in the past in my reviews, if you're playing on video editing, some heavy photo editing or any heavier load also, games and so on, this is not the right device for you, I guess. But this is not what it's planned to be. And that's why I already want to go into the heat and noise, starting off with the noise demo here. Okay, you've heard the noise levels, and I gotta say, even though they are mostly quite subtle, there is a little bit of a higher, slightly higher pitched whiny sound from the fan, but it is not really anything disturbing. What is also audible here at this point, you always hear a constant, very high pitched sound, but I was only able to maybe hear that from about 20 to 30 centimeters, so that's something I wouldn't bother about. But what is the main highlight here? It actually managed to leave the fan off for I think like even five, if not even 10 minutes of full load. And in any normal situations, in my over two week period of testing, I think like three or four weeks I have it already, the fans never turned on. And this is amazing because this is pretty much 
kind of like a passive, like a silent system, even though it has the fan. In any normal situation, it does just doesn't turn on. About the temperatures, let's get quickly into those. I had an ambient temperature of 20 degrees, which is a little bit lower than usually. And on the back here, I had values of about 27 on the sides and 30 in the middle. And the same goes also for the upper part with only 37% of CPU temperature. And the full load, actually not much has changed, which is really impressive. Because there on the bottom here on the sides, I had like 39 to in the middle 43 degrees. Same pretty much also for the upper part and the CPU. And I almost don't get how they managed to do this. Only 66 degrees temperature. This is, this is amazing. Now let's get into the battery. A full charge takes about 2 hours and 25. Absolutely okay. No problems here. And I gotta say, battery life is maybe not the most impressive one by these days, especially with KB Lake being so much more efficient. I gotta say what I got is at least four and a half hours to maybe even slightly over six hours with an average of five hours for me with a brightness of 60% though, because this is what you will usually have. This is what I usually calibrate my displays to, to about 130, 140 lux. And that's something that I get a good experience of. And for that is actually respectable. Sure, I would wish for maybe like six constantly. But compared to the other tablets that I've had in such a level, this is actually still absolutely okay. Software, no need to really talk about anything because it's Windows. It is already running the creator's update and everything works out fine. There is no bloat, which is nice. Like I said, the only thing that I would have to point out is the fact that, like I already said, the display saving technology was on. You have to get rid of that to get a great experience because I just did not like that. But we've covered it all and that's why I would say let's get into the pros and cons. Here I want to start off with the, in my opinion, best in class design, but also build. I've just not, not, I've just not seen anything that gets on the same level. What is also something that I just have to point out still as a pro is that we have at least one USB type A port. Then we have a very good type cover. And even though it's a little bit on the smaller side, a great trackpad, a very good stylus in my opinion. Windows Hello camera works very well. The display is absolutely gorgeous. Best in class speakers, very good daily use performance. We have a very fast SSD and this even already on the 256 gigabyte version. Great firmness in my opinion, absolutely good noise levels, pretty much silent in normal use. I never really managed to get the fans spinning in normal use, good battery life, and the value by now, since it has dropped in price and you get a lot of flash sales or something like that, so it's on sale quite often by now, the value is actually really good, especially if you maybe take the M3 version, which I think would be the one that I would go for. On the not so great side, ports, not really future-proof anymore. We have no Thunderbolt 3 or something like that. Like I said, DPSD can't be easily disabled. You will have to use maybe a, a registry for that uh, tweak. Then no brightness shortcut on the keyboard, something that personally annoyed me quite a lot, but I think I would just set it once to 60% and just leave it all the time there. Constant high pitch sound, but it is in brackets because I don't think anyone will really hear this in any normal distance. Then fans at full speed, slightly whistling, but really just slightly not annoying. And the battery life maybe not good enough for some people, maybe like students and so on. And that's why I would say let's already get to the conclusion. I think I was quite clear in saying that this is the best tablet convertible because all the other ones that I've tried, maybe one like for Lenovo had, like for example, Lenovo had the better type cover, but I didn't have a screen that was on the same high quality level, very close, but not on the same level. The build quality is unmatched. The speakers are by far the best. The performance is good. The battery life is still better and everything else, especially the stylus was noticeably nicer in normal use, like some others. I've heard from a few people that, for example, the latest Lenovo seems to be better, but the experience here was just way better for me. And if I would have to recommend someone a tablet convertible, it would definitely be this one. If you don't need so much power, I say save the money and get the M3 version, because I think that would be good enough even for me, absolutely no problems. And then you should get even better battery life. But otherwise, I would have a hard time recommending anything else. Maybe the Acer Switch Alpha, the 12, that had no um, fan at all, but it just didn't have the same high quality display, sound not nearly at all, and such other things. So this, like I said, and I can't stress it off enough, is still by far the best one. And I'm not quite sure why no one else did manage to keep up, especially since they already are like one generation ahead in terms of ports and so on. But I think once the Surface Pro 5 will be out, this one could even drop more in price. And if you don't need the newest ports and so on, maybe the battery optimizations, this in terms of value gets even better. 
And I guess the new benchmark then will be the five. I don't see any other option and I don't think anyone will be able to catch up anytime soon. This is where I want to leave it. I'm highly impressed what they managed to do here. And after all, this is why they kind of invented this category to just show everyone how it's done. And I know they wanted to get all the others on board to try to get great alternatives, but I really don't see a great alternative that I would personally recommend. That's it. I hope you liked the review. Maybe a thumbs up subscription and otherwise I wish you a nice day. Until next time. Bye.